So actually, my name is Casper. This is the work I've been, uh, I've been doing uh, with Alex. Anyway, all good. We will, we will talk about cross-chain bridges here. So uh, just to establish what we are talking about, a bridge is a system that kind of helps you to move assets from one chain to another one. And the way it works is that assets, they get locked on, the, on one chain, and then you issue a debt token on uh, another chain. Now, if you want to withdraw your initial funds, then you burn tokens on the chain where the tokens were minted, and then uh, the to they, your original tokens, they get released. So there are uh, three parts to this system. There is a smart contract on the original chain, then there is a contract on, on the target chain, and there is the communicator that uh, uh, exchanges information between uh, the two chains. So we looked at the design space of cross-chain bridges, and uh, we categorized them across two dimensions. Uh, the first one is uh, the degree of decentralization, and the second one is the settlement speed. So originally, people worked on standard centralized bridges where you typically wait seven days before the funds get, uh, get released. And the communicator itself is a central party. Uh, Boba introduced fast centralized bridges where they have liquidity pools, uh, where the operators, they take the risk on themselves, but they allow you to exchange the funds uh, much, much quicker than with the standard bridges. The recent advancement are ZK bridges, uh, which do not require a centralized party uh, as a communicator, but uh, they are completely trustless. I think this is a really, really cool advancement. And uh, over, uh, like, even if you use uh, ZK bridges, you can imagine that there may be standard bridges where you still have to wait some time before releasing the funds. And there may be fast bridges with liquidity pools. So how would a ZK bridge work? So the idea is that you have two chains, let's say chain A and chain B. And chain B would have a light client that synchronizes the state from the chain A. So you could always prove that you have the funds uh, on chain B, and that's reflected uh, on the other chain. You could also imagine uh, going the opposite way, where uh, the state of chain B is reflected on the state of chain A. Th uh, this would allow you to have a cross-chain bridge bet between these two chains, and uh, this cross-chain bridge could be completely trustless. One important thing is to keep track of the forks, because you never know when uh, chain reorganization may occur. So let's look a bit closer at uh, forks. So, uh, uh, a good example is a recent fork on Ethereum, where we went uh, from proof of work to proof of stake and proof of work. And if you run a bridge uh, from Ethereum to somewhere else, you, the bridge would have to pick one of those forks. Now, what's the impact on uh, performance and security when we have forks? Typically, actually, there is no impact besides what the source chain uh, promises in terms of performance and security. The situation gets much more interesting when we have chain reorganizations called reorgs. So a reorg is a change of the tip during bridge operations, because the bridge has to pick one of the, those forks, and that may need to be reflected uh, on, the, uh, on the target chain. Reorgs m may occur organically, or they may be caused by, uh, by an attack. And they may impact the state of the target chain and the debt issuer. And this attack is quite realistic. So and I looked at the recent numbers. So even one hour of a 51% attack, according to Crypto51, is about $1 million. So how would this work? Let's say we have a tip B2. And then I'm running this 51% attack. Let's imagine that I'm the attacker, and I'm making a deposit on the legitimate chain. And I uh, bridge my funds onto the other chain. Cool, they are there. Now, if I want to withdraw my funds, look what happens. On the legitimate chain, they, uh, this is reflected on the block before. But I also reflect this on my 51% uh, uh, chain. 
where there was no deposit. So without any protection, I can steal funds from the bridge this way. As long as I can build more, more blocks and people can build uh, on top of it. So when we want to look at the reorgs, besides the two dimensions, we, we think uh, we also need to look at the third dimension, which reflects the state reversion. So if we go between two L1 chains and there is a reorg, you cannot revert the state of the other L1 chain, right? But if you go between L1 and L2, uh, you could revert the state of L2 because L2 is secured by, by the given L1. So let's look at reorgs from this perspective. So our assessment in terms of performance is the following. For fast bridges, there is a medium impact on the performance because it is dictated by the, by the frequency of those reorgs. Whereas on, on standard bridges, there is low impact uh, as, as long as the number of confirmations uh, is higher than the, than, the, than the frequency of the reorgs. The situation gets much more interesting when we look at the security aspect. If you have L1 to L1 bridges and there is a reorg on the source bridge, then you effectively can steal the funds. And there is no way uh, to go back with, uh, with that operation. With fast L1 and L2 bridges, uh, we believe the impact is high, uh, but there may be a way to prevent double spending. When it comes to standard bridges, uh, our assessment is that the impact is medium because as long as you have more confirmations that go uh, beyond the reorg, then you should be OK. But let's look uh, a little bit closer uh, at the L1 to L2 bridges, because clearly there is a difference be between L1 to L1 and L1 to L2. So here is one solution how you could prevent double spending on those L1 to L2 bridges. Um, and I'm going to go over it a bit slow. Because uh, besides just doing the deposit, you, uh, you'd like to do uh, a hash of that deposit, but also you'd like to know the sum of the, all of the previous deposits, also the, the tip of the chain and chain ID. And let's say we have this information, and I launch attack on this, uh, on, 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 uh, on this chain. Then I bridge my funds to, uh, to my target chain. And now imagine I want to withdraw uh, my funds. So in the first situation, uh, on the legitimate chain, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that the, the, key, uh, the key piece is here that the bridge keeps track of the, mo the hash of the most recent deposit. So uh, the bridge has this information. And when I withdraw the funds, I need to reference this uh, most recent hash. Now, when I withdraw the funds uh, to this block before, everything checks out because the, the hash HK is included in the previous block. And that would be verified by the smart contract that unlocks the tokens. Now, look at what happens at this 51% uh, attack chain. Uh, when I, when I still have the same smart contract that ver verifies the hash, but the hash from the original deposit is not there. So the, uh, this uh, withdrawal will fail. So uh, by using this mechanism, we can, uh, we can protect uh, those uh, uh, legitimate withdrawals when uh, in the presence of uh, chain reorgs. So uh, with this mitigation, uh, still, uh, we still have a problem with L1s to L1s, but L1s to L2s uh, are OK, because we mitigated uh, the, you know, the possibility of stealing funds uh, when we go back to the original chain. And note that this works both for fast bridges and for slow bridges. So uh, here are a few conclusions that I'd like to, to uh, leave you with. I think they are most, probably most useful for uh, bridge builders. So the design space of cross-chain bridges 
uh, is growing, and uh, it's pretty exciting. I think that especially the trustless ZK bridges are really cool because you eliminate the only centralized party uh, in, uh, in the, in the cross-chain um, uh, bridge projects. I believe it is a significant advancement. In our assessment, overall, uh, reorgs have much higher impact on uh, security and performance than the forks. And also, security uh, seems like a much more complex issue than, uh, than, uh, than performance when it comes to uh, cross-chain bridges. I don't know if you noticed that, uh, but the impact of reorgs uh, was independent of decentralization. So uh, what, what uh, was important uh, was whether uh, we are talking about L1 to L2 or L1 to L1 uh, bridges. Clearly, fast L1 to L1 bridges are a no-go uh, in the presence of reorgs because you can and you can end up st uh, stealing the funds. Now, uh, the presented mitigation strategy is applicable to any L1 to L2 bridges, and it, it doesn't really depend whether we have centralized or decentralized uh, bridges. And finally, uh, the different kind of bridges, they can be mixed. So you may have uh, one type of bridge for the off-ramp, and another type of bridge uh, for, uh, for uh, one for the on-ramp and one for the off-ramp. So, uh, with, that, uh, uh, this is, uh, so with that, I'd like to finish my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. My name is Kasper. We have a booth over there. Uh, and if you want to talk about security or audits, uh, I'll be there after this presentation. Thank you very much.